Hi everybody, welcome back to the land of low friction. Uh, today going to be giving you a bit of an update with the testing uh, for Hot Wax X. Uh, we're part way through testing, but we're far enough in that I can give an update with regards to how that testing is going. And it's also fairly interesting in that we're getting, I guess, some a bit of information now to be able to sort of talk about really is graphene kind of the new frontier in bicycle chain wax and bicycle chain lubrication. And so, you know, we get it, we're starting to get a bit of a picture uh, with regards to that now. So there's a few interesting things to talk about there. All right, here we go, onto the main thrust of today. Um, so how is the very expensive Hot Wax X going in uh, control and field testing? So is graphene, or in this case, nanine, uh, really rocking the cycling world with regards to bicycle chain lubrication? And what are we sort of seeing with this uh, in comparison to other products that have um, been using graphene? So yeah, is graphene all that in a bag of chips or uh, is it being a bit of a hype train and um, not the next step that we were looking for? Okay, so back to the data table. This is the where block by block. And I've just sorted this by um, the block three result. Uh, we can see that Silka Hot Wax X is in fact, uh, so I guess at that point, on top. We've got 0%, 0%, 0% for the first 3,000 kilometers of testing. So uh, that's a new record on, on that part. So we have, uh, so even the dry contamination did not phase it at all. So, and there's something similar-ish there. Now I, I can't tell you uh, officially, Officially, I don't know what is in Rax Black Diamond uh, Wax, uh, but what I can say is that their 4 plus 1 mix, which is the high concentration additive mix, also recorded 0% in Block 2. So that's interesting. And um, even the 11 plus 1 did extremely well. But uh, so for the first 3,000 kilometers, uh, it's you know, Hot Wax X has set a new uh, low wear record of 0%. That's going to be hard to beat. Now, where things do get super interesting, um, if I sort things by uh, wet contamination, we can see that things went not as well as I would have expected. So we got a what we'll say is a relatively high result um, in the wet contamination test block. So that being at 23.1%, so things dropped down a bit there. Um, and what is also really interesting, I'm not saying what's in it because I don't uh, know what's in it, uh, officially, is that we have the high concentration mix for Rex Black Diamond, also kind of higher than we would expect. Um, definitely what was interesting when doing the testing for Rex on the um, the production formulas was the um, 11 plus 1 mix, which was um, a little bit lower performing in the dry blocks, as opposed to the 4 plus 1, was that uh, it actually came in quite a bit lower in the wet contamination block. And so we uh, obviously had to retest that and we got the same result. And then in doing the single application longevity test for those two products, we also got basically a correlating result where the four plus one mix was amazing. Uh, even in the dry contamination block, it just kept on going. Uh, yet the 11 plus one beat it in the, um, the single application longevity test uh, with wet contamination. So we had three uh, results that, that all sort of came out backing each other up and that was um, pretty interesting and then now with uh, Hot Wax X again not saying that these have the same or possibly similar things in them but we just have something interesting there very very interesting um, now I have written to Josh with regards to the um, the test result uh, of that and uh, he's yeah confirmed on his side so it's always good when you get a sort of confirmation that they're seeing something similar uh, they're seeing something similar and they are having a look at uh, graphene in wet and you know what sort of things may be going on there so what we can kind of I guess an initial uh, I'm not going to say conclusion we've just got some in very interesting data but um, I guess we'll say that at the moment we can sort of draw a, a, a bit of a you know this is very likely that uh, you know if you're using graphene in wax and it's a top graphene and you have a top wax base that it could be amazing overall you know, in dry and dry off-road that um, you know really it's giving us some of the you know most outstanding test results that we've seen however however there may be something 
that um, is happening with water and graphene that is less than optimal and that we're finding that uh, the other sort of top waxes um, are testing you know sort of half to a third uh, plus you know less aware uh, in that wet contamination uh, block which is yeah it's just really interesting stuff uh, very quickly while I'm here um, just because I get questions about it uh, with I guess other products that we know for certain that have uh, graphene in them unlike um, with uh, black diamond where we uh, we can't say for sure um, so the first to market really with um, graphene uh, in the lubricant that we know of was because you know marketing was, all, marketing sorry was all about it graphene lube and then uh, following up with graphene wax um, so yeah we, I get a few emails uh, about graphene wax um, I do I have tested that it tested really really very averagely um, and that's typically been if somebody has written in with their experience with graphene wax that is typically you know I guess their experience has matched what my uh, detailed test review which is up on the website um, covers so um, just to cover it off so because I think it's an outlier um, and it's sort of may muddy the waters somewhat with regards to you know the overall story with regards to is graphene in lubricants and graphene in wax um, all that in a bag of chips or not um, I think they've just done something not quite right with this product so uh, I mean right from the start really I mean the pricing does not make sense at all I mean we have a look at their graphene lube and it generally retails depending you can find it cheaper you can sort of you typically find it anywhere from about 200 to 240 dollars for 140 mil for the graphene lube so it's a super expensive lube uh, that I have tested that but that was a private test um, and those tests uh, that result is still confidential so I haven't given the green light to make the test results um, public I can say that it tested outstanding. Um, so, like across the board, it was outstanding. Um, so, the only issue really with this is that it's just super expensive. You do need to apply the initial uh, application immersive because it does have the sort of potential um, penetration issues, and that's they, they do recommend that um, uh, to be applied immersive. But you know, uh, a bit similar to I guess what we see with say Hot Wax X, um, really expensive. Uh, really expensive um, drip lube but um, you know it's just super performing uh, test results when it comes to graphene wax um, you know 44 bucks for 320 grams hot wax X is uh, retail of 279 for 300 grams um, I mean the pricing makes no sense and then the performance is really not it doesn't live up to anything like graphene lube and not from the ZSC testing anyway so I, I don't know my my theory this is the only thing that makes sense to me is that there is just a complete sort of token amount of graphene in the graphene wax just so that they can call it graphene wax and that most of the black is just coloring um, because if it has a whole bunch of very expensive friction modifier in it then the pricing just does not add up so the pricing is kind of matching the performance it's not really um, adding up to what we'd expect to see with uh, it having super expensive uh, graphene in there. Um, one last little bit to possibly help back that up. Again, do not know officially at all what is in here. However, uh, in the high concentration mix for, um, for Rex, if you use four of the base blocks plus one um, mod block, so included in the box is 11 base blocks in the one mod block, if you're using the uh, high concentration blend of four plus one, um, these boxes are retailing for basically about 89.90 Australian. You would be like for the same amount of wax, you would be at a pretty similar price uh, as Hot Wax X. So that kind of lines up to maybe something. The test results kind of line up to maybe something. Um, and yeah. Absolute Black's graphene wax kind of adds up to something not quite right. All right, and so uh, you're currently in the extreme contamination block six, which takes uh, a little while to get through because there's so many interventions for adding uh, the, the contamination. So it's a very stop start, and I'm not always there to get the next intervention done. So that just takes a fair while to trudge through. And then I'll be moving into the suite of single application longevity tests, and I think they're going to be really interesting. I think based on um, 
in the the dry um, test blocks in the main test and also what we saw with uh, rex black diamond again no idea what's in it officially not a clue um, but based on on that uh, we could see um, hot wax x you know being right up there possibly setting a, a new record again with regards to the treatment longevity that we see um, and in the field testing i'm also seeing basically pretty much double the length uh, of kilometers with hot wax x before it moves out of the silky smooth zone uh, and into the the time where it's just starting to sound and, and feel a bit dry so um, the claims with regards to the wax treatment longevity especially say in dry um, have been you know it, it's really matching what uh, seeing in both the control testing and with field testing so it's really quite uh, something exceptional okay but uh, alas it is not quite perfect so you have some great stuff obviously with its um you know dry conditions performance and i'm really excited about the single application longevity testing um however we've got yes i guess on note the uh the wear rates that we've seen uh with the uh, wet contamination block it'll be interesting to see how uh, block six goes but it's likely to follow the same trend obviously so so there's that but um the the other thing really i guess just to flag is that um for hot wax x uh silka do appear to be using a um, higher sort of melting point temperature for the wax base and what that generally translates to with these particular waxes is that it's stiffer so you can feel that it's stiffer when um you go to do the initial um link uh, sort of breaking the bond post your rewax but uh, not only that, like when you first install it and start writing it, like it is really draggy, um, you know, much more noticeable than uh, just the initial uh, start off with a freshly waxed chain of, you know, um, MSW or hot melt. And that really draggy um, breaking time goes for a lot longer. So with MSW and hot melt, generally you'd be looking at like if you had a race and you freshly waxed your chain, normally your pre-race warm up of sort of around about 20 minutes that's going to get that sort of broken in beautifully all the the surfaces of the of the wax and all the parts of the chain what what happens is you know excess is pressed out those surfaces polish up to a beautiful sort of polished finish and you've got this just super slippery wax coating on all parts and that's what's sliding on each other and that's why wax you know just dominates so much um you know in the top levels of competition and you know really filtered down to sort of pretty much everywhere now for anyone who's been sort of pondering in this space for a little bit they just see why wax dominates so much or they see that it does and sort of this is a bit of the understanding why you know, that polished uh, wax surface that you've got um, you know it's basically got the lowest stiction really uh, out of sort of you know bicycle chain lubricants and you've got really no viscous friction so you've just got something super efficient there and you're more or less leaving the chain metal out of the equation because you know everything's running on a solid coating of super slippery wax so uh what happens um yeah normally that 20 minute sort of break in time uh pre-race uh for those waxes is fine it can be a little bit longer if it's cold so they recommend sort of around 45 minutes if it's really really cold you know 30 odd minutes if it's just you know say cold and normal ambient temps you know it's about sort of 20 25 minutes hot wax x you're pretty much going to want to at least double that so um before a race uh, in sort of normal ambient temps uh, which I'll sort of call around the sort of 20 degree uh, centigrade mark I would be recommending personally to break that chain in for at least an hour um, to get it into its sort of optimal zone prior to that race um, so yeah if things are really cold yeah, let's give me a long break in um, so and it's really something that you would want to do really indoors on an ergo um, as opposed to trying to do that out in the cold because the wax is going to be harder again if the chain's really cold the wax is you know colder and harder that break in to get it all polished up is going to take a lot longer and that is something that we sort of i guess already see so i do get a, a few questions um, from around the world and being in adelaide i just don't have those sort of minus 20 degrees celsius temperatures to go out into like you have in north america and canada and a lot of uh you know sort of europe um that you know they they recommend that you know really to break the chain uh you know in indoors if practical which may well not be for a lot before heading outdoors because if you head outdoors with your freshly waxed chain into sub-zero temperatures that breaking time is going to be longer may not be an issue if you're just heading out on your normal training ride but 
possibly more so if you've got you know a fast group ride to keep up with or a race so uh, that is just simply something that's going to be i guess exacerbated by uh, this particular wax base with hot wax x that that break in time is going to be really long and really draggy um, so just be aware of that um, because yeah especially i guess you're paying that sort of price for a wax you may be expecting that it's going to be all singing, all dancing um, on every single possible level. But um, yeah, it's it's amazing on the one side, but we've got some sort of things that you know we're going to be sort of watching to see how they improve uh, in the future. You will see from the um, the podcast uh, if you listen to that one, the marginal gains on with Josh, where he's talking about the sort of the different melting um, point temperature waxes and sort of I guess the, there's some pros and cons for those. And it is very much, uh, I guess, to a point like, um, you know, if you only had one pair of clothes to wear for the, uh, or sorry, one set of clothes to wear for the entire year, uh, and where you lived had sort of temperature variances from minus 20 in winter through to 40 degrees uh, Celsius in summer, you're probably not going to be comfortable for the entire year with that just the one set of clothes that you're wearing. You're going to be amazing for a certain, you know, part of the year bit chilly in some and a bit bit hot in others so it can be a little bit of a balance and that um yeah they sort of talk about you know it would be great if you know if we could have sort of some higher temperature melting point waxes for uh you know really hot areas and we could have some lower temperature melting point waxes for really cold areas so the breaking is going to be a whole lot easier and then we've got something in the middle that suits the, the bulk of the demographic but is the market really there or ready to sort of go to that uh, that really next level with immersive waxing that uh, here's my summer wax pot and here's my winter wax pot. You know, we're just really at the point now where, um, you know, very pleasingly waxing has gone from quite niche five uh, or so years ago to really mainstream because so many people are just really understanding what the huge benefits of uh, immersive waxing are. And hopefully, thanks to some of the rambling work I've been doing, understanding um, that immersive waxing really is not very difficult at all in fact it takes a lot longer to listen to me talk about anything than it does to actually um, do an immersive wax which is super quick and easy so that's kind of where we're at uh, on that so um, I'll wrap it there hope that's been um, sort of a interesting initial insight into the hot wax X test text uh, sorry running out of uh, ability to speak testing and uh and also just a bit of an insight into kind of what we're seeing with um the waxes that have graphene in them or possibly i don't know have graphene in them and uh what we're seeing there it's been interesting stuff with regards to uh wet performance and uh and application longevity so more to come as we get through the more testing and next one i'll try to do a bit of an update uh, on where we're at with some testing overall and i'll be starting to rip into some of the detail reviews of the big backlog of lubricants i've got to get through uh, with that, I'll be doing them by video as opposed to my far too long documents that um, <clears throat> no one would ever be able to read. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for that. Stay low friction, and I'll see you on the next one.